Okay, are we recording yet? Okay, no? Get me my guava, mango, papaya, and honey kombucha now! Now! And when I say now, I mean 10 seconds ago when I started talking about it. What's that? We are recording. Okay. Okay, do I have your undying solitary word that you will cut that out? Thank you. Okay, guys, well... Before we get started, I'm very honored and pleased and all that bullshit about a new drop. Guys, I would like you to welcome a brand new drop. Which very often doesn't have great airflow, I can tell you, based upon the stink of my cats. Poop. Um, huh? You don't necessarily have the airflow in your apartment and you think you do. Poop. 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 Okay, guys, one more quick order of business. New segment. New segment, daily call out. Okay, roll the graphic for that. Okay, is it rolling now? Okay, good. <coughs> it's the call out of the week. It's time to call out some bullshit. I'm gonna call somebody's ass out. Okay, guys, today I would like to call out the Rock and Roll Cats. If you don't know who the Rock and Roll Cats are, they're a group of cats who do rock and roll. Okay, listen to that. Poop. Those Rock and Roll Cats have been doing this for over a decade. And they have not improved on those instruments at all. In fact, I believe they have only gone worse. It's time for those cats to give up on these rock and roll dreams of theirs, okay? That is my own sperm. Every single person on this planet is gay. A special edition of the Entree Leadership Podcast oh today. Oh boy. Oh. At Entree Leadership Summit, we were able to sit down with Dr. Jordan Peterson on the Ooh. stage with our premium attendees, our platinum Ooh. attendees. Oh, amazing. And do an interview. Okay, you hear that absolute guitar shredding, rock and roll cats? That's what it's supposed to sound like, okay? Open those ears, listen and learn, you flea bags. Okay, guys, that's right. Today we'll be looking at one of our favorite online kooks. Oh, what's the guy's name? Dr. Jordan Jace. Dr. Jordy J, I think he calls himself. He's teamed up with wealth guru, what is this guy's name again? Dave Ramsey, who during the uh, pandemic revealed himself to be a complete mm, adult baby, mm, adult baby, poop. There's a lot of things you can accuse him of, but being uninteresting is not one of them. So. I would take issue with that. And you know well, as, as small business owners, or maybe some of you are larger business owners, uh -huh. that you mistreat even one of your customers at your peril. Poop. Because if you mistreat someone, <laughs> they not only will they remember that, and they will never forget it. And we have a specialized module as human right. beings, by the way, to remember cheaters. Right. So you might forget people you cooperate with, but you do not forget people that ripped you off. Whoa. And not only hey, that Jordy, Jesus, calm down, Jordy. I, do I command you to calm down. And I wonder if that module that Jordy Jeter J Jeterman is talking about has activated in a lot of the listeners viewers of the david ramsey program uh it's from just a couple days ago dave ramsey faces 150 <laughs> poop dave ramsey faces a 150 million dollar lawsuit for promoting company accused of fraud uh this suit claims ramsey received more than 30 mil <laughs> Pendejo. between 2015 to 2021 to promote timeshare exit team on the ramsey show the washington state-based company which now operates as some other crap allegedly promised to help customers terminate their timeshare contracts which is a notoriously difficult to exit uh the complaint alleges customers paid a total of 70 mil poop in fees for people to be released from their timeshare the suit said timeshare exit team failed to help customers and instead employed false statements and delay tactics uh, basically uh, defrauded them the complaint also alleges ramsey promoted deceptive false and incomplete information in violation of consumer protection laws while personally earning 450,000 a month from the deal oh boy uh, this company has already shut down in 2021 after agreeing to pay $2.6 in a settlement over its deceptive promises. Oh, jeez. It doesn't sound good. The suit alleges that Ramsey's claims were almost as deceptive as a group of cats claiming to be rock and roll cats but don't know how to play their instruments. I made that part up. I put that part in there. Just That was a joke, guys. 
You know, I'm giving those cats a hard time, but if they come to my town, I'm definitely going. And not only that, you will tell everybody you know about it. Oh. If you mistreat a handful of your customers, right. I don't know how many, yeah. if you mistreat 100 customers, your business will fail. Oh, Because they'll tell 100 people, and that's 10,000. Oh, and that's geez. probably now, How many people in that lawsuit? I wonder if Dave Ramsey right now is, Jordy, ixnay on the bad business practice, eh, eh. Come on, man. Uh-huh. Companies that rip off their customers. Right. Fail. Oh. Customer companies that Dave, even that? mildly mistreat their customers fail. So you come after us and you say, well, just because we, you've made a profit, so you're an exploiter. It's like, no, you have failed to make a profit what? because you're a loser. And now you're <laughs> resentful about it. And you're coming after me. Whoa, right. Jordy, easy. <laughs> hey, you're going to get that little suit in a bunch with that attitude. Calm down. So, you know, I don't have a problem with financial advice, self-help advice. I think it's good. I think all that's good. But you could find all that stuff, better, better, better advice and all that stuff without all the nefarious baggage at the library. Okay? At the library. But what Jordan Squeederman and this other guy are going on and on about, mostly Jordy is going on and on about, is, uh, is basically that, like, businesses can do no wrong. Because if businesses do do wrong, then no one will buy stuff from them, basically. <laughs> Which, in Dave Ramsey's case, I hope that's not true. Part of the reason that the Democrats have shifted in the direction that you described, uh -huh. in the direction that seems to be opposed in many ways to the best interests of both the working class and the middle class, Who? but also characterized by this incredible strain of illiberalism right. and corporate fascist collusion, the sort of thing that you document, for example, in the relationship between the power elites and big pharma. Right. And so... Okay, this is Jordy Speederman uh, interviewing, interviewing RFK. RFK, wow. And he seems to be framing this a little bit like the Democrats are in bed with big pharma. I mean, it's true, but you might want to check out... He doesn't really mention the Republicans who... You might want to check out. You might want to check out what they've been doing with the big pharmaceutical companies too. Yeah, I mean, every single person on this planet is gay. Don't see how that's relevant to what I was saying, but okay. Poop. But also, I don't know. This is a little bit weird because we just saw a clip where Jordy Peterman is like, basically, businesses can do no wrong. You know, if they do do wrong, then uh, no one will buy from them. Also, here's an example of business doing real wrong that's very successful. Very successful, profitable businesses, they are doing very wrong. The big pharmaceutical companies. It almost seems like when it serves him, when it's something his audience wants to hear, his anti-vax audience wants to hear, then he's kind of flexible on some of these ideas, you know what I mean? He's kind of sniffing around a little bit, you know what I mean, doing the... <laughs> You know, he's out here sniffing around like a cat playing a drum to try to get a treat. Okay. I mean, is Jordy just being a bitter loser about this? You have failed to make a profit what? because you're a loser. He's just being a bitter loser because they won and he loses, I guess. I guess, according to him. So, yeah, I don't know. It seems like Jordy's kind of whole view of the world and philosophy will just kind of twist in the wind wherever he thinks his audience will go. Yeah. So this guy, RFK, he's all over the place now. He's all over the place. He's doing all these interviews and all this crap. I don't know how much of this Jordy interview I could play because they banned its ass on YouTube, which, you know, I, I think most people get what... Well, he says some crazy stuff in this interview. He, said, he says some crazy stuff in this interview. But they took this Jordy interview down. There are little clips up. But I watched the whole interview on Daily Wire Plus, and RFK is basically like a right-wing Democrat with a anti-vax chaser. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you need to know. Doesn't support Medicare for all or any of that stuff. He's, you know, and he's and he's like, I'm an anti-establishment guy, even though he's from this like political legacy family. You can tell even his in his answers with Jordy that he just has like politician in his DNA and stuff. But there is, I don't know if I can play this part, so I'll just say it. There's a part where he says that he thinks stuff like chemicals in the water supply uh, are causing kids to be transgender. So he's a mixed bag. <laughs> he's a mixed bag. There is one thing that I do think is humanizing about him, though, in this interview. I did not know this about RFK. He was a heroin addict for a while. That kind of makes him likable. The first ex-heroin addict president that's kind of that's kind of interesting also many rock musicians heroin addicts 
which causes them to not be able to play their instruments that well. But uh, RFK is a wacky guy. He's a very wacky guy. There's a part in this interview where he says he basically implies that the reason that the media doesn't like Trump is because Trump was anti-vax at some point, which, you know, I don't know if you guys remember when the vaccine was trying to, was getting approval. He kind of, you know, he was taking, he was basically taking credit for the vaccine. So you might want to look into that one, RFK, bro. You know, I don't know what's up. But that's basically his whole thing. It's a lot of it's a lot of anti-vax stuff and a lot of a lot of weird a lot of weird weirdness. He's an odd bird. He's an odd bird. That's he's an odd he's an odd young man. That's for sure. So good luck to him in the primary. Looks like he's gonna lose, but he's polling way higher than expected. Okay, this is pretty funny. Jordy says something funny here about uh, his bro Joe Rogan, who's quoted as saying, mm, "Adult baby." Check this out. Yeah, well, like you said, like you said, huh? well, t time will tell, like you said, because it is a new technology and and it, it is extraordinarily powerful in the way you described. I mean, Rogan's podcast is number one in 97 countries. Right. He's clearly the most powerful journalist who's ever lived. Well, that's a little bit, <laughs> that's a little bit liberal use of the term journalist there, right? Steve-O's podcast is pretty popular. He's one of the most popular journalists that has ever lived. Steve-O. Bert Kreischer. Very popular. One of our most popular journalists. <laughs> I will say in this long ass insufferable interview, there was one interesting part where awkward part where, you know, Jordy Peterson, he's really into like climate change is not a big deal type stuff. And RFK is kind of publicly known as an environmentalist. He's, uh, he talks about that all the time. And he was not having any of that. So that was kind of funny. Jordy Peterson, it's not, the, it's not that big a deal, right? These environmentalists, they kiss my ass, right? And then uh, RFK was like, uh, no, it is a big deal, actually. So that's kind of funny. He kind of left Jordy Peterson playing the drums as, <laughs> as if he were a cat trying to get a treat. Okay. Okay. And then the great Jordarini uh, interviewed this guy, James Lindsay, who's a very, uh, I mean, he's given RFK a run for his money on the wackiness front. Uh, people do, look at this. People do make fun of Jordy's drip. But I'm going to go ahead and say it's the one thing I like about Jordy. He's like, I'm, I'm famous, so I'm going to get a little wacky with the dress code. <laughs> I mean, this interview is absolutely unlistenable, you know, and it's amazing that this this guy, James Lindsay, has gotten this far. I'm just going to play like a, a summary highlight reel of, of this interview. Of the, How long is this? Oh, God, I, I sat through an hour, 50 minutes of this. Okay, here we go. After leaving the university, I just got uh, I just got a job. I, actually, I didn't. I became a massage therapist, which is the internet thinks this is just hilarious. Uh, okay, um, not healthy. Yeah, well, one of the things I learned from you was Catholic was about as sane as you get. Whoa, mm. jeez. Okay, right. Yeah. So you destroy that. You think? Well, you think the Catholics are insane. You wait till you see what that's protecting you from. Right. It, okay. That, Polytheistic okay. paganism. Uh, totally. Oh, insane. Right. Oh, oh, boy. With okay. some child sacrifice thrown in and some nature worship. Right. Okay. But the, of course. Ah. In, in right. Like Dylan Mulvaney's a parody. And oh, what's right. happening to will, will, women's sports is a parody. Right. And what North Face is doing with their advertising is a parody. And it's like, oh, Absolutely. yes, that's right. Satan is an evil clown. Yeah. Well, right. right. The only thing about the evil clowns is they're not funny. Damn. Right, that's the be well they're because not funny. no, they're not funny. They're not that's funny. right. They're not funny at all. It's not funny at all. That's true. Evil clowns are not funny. Absolutely. Sniffing. <laughs> so yeah, so he he says this speech earlier this year, an interview. He says that we're going to rewrite the social contract. He says this again and again, but he says specifically this time we're going to rewrite the social contract so that society accepts as we move from an economy of production and consumption right. to an economy. And I kid you not, Jordan of caring and sharing. Oh. Oh yeah. And that's communism. You mean because productive <laughs> okay. generosity on the free market front has communism, more okay? I guess the criteria for getting on Jordy Peterson's show is you kind of have to be a little bonked in the head to get on Jordy Peterson's show. That's that seems to be the bar for getting on Jordy's show. Uh this guy is like a notoriously wacky guy, James Lindsay. He's he 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 was like a math PhD and then he was a massage therapist for a while. And then he's like, I'm going to call people groomer on the internet. That's my next business move. And it's sort of funny because he's also now like, he's a, like a Marxism expert, he says. Uh, but he thinks, 
the World Economic Forum is communist because they said sharing and caring. Because they said sharing and caring somewhere. Um, yeah, just so just a, a little bonked on the head. If you're out there and you're a little bonked on the head, Jordy's listening. Demons. One of them is a whistleblower, and the other 99 are malignant narcissists. Whoa. Right. So, and I think they should be allowed to have their say, but they shouldn't be thrown. The troll demons, and those are, what would you say, machine-human hybrids, right? right? Because when you're online, you're a machine-human hybrid. Sure. Okay. Troll demons are not human. Right. Right. Anonymous troll demons are not human. Right. right? Because you don't put them in with the people. You put them in, like, anonymous troll demon hell. Whoa. And if you want to go there and visit and see what... It doesn't sound like... That doesn't sound like very free speech type crap. Also, the, the term troll demon would probably best fit the guy you're talking to. Also, Jordan Peterson's always talking about narcissists. These narcissists. I mean, look, I like the drip, but you are wearing a lobster suit. So, you know, I would chill on the chill on the narcissist crap. Okay, guys, alert, alert. Every single person on this planet is gay. Poop. Uh, that's the alert sound to let us know that is that it is now time to look at Jordy Peterson's Twitter Twitter feed because you know it's always something kooky and wacky and it's a and it's a window into whatever weird controversy is going online in you know the the stranger parts of the online of the online. <laughs> Okay, so here's an odd one. Uh, Dave Rubin tweets out, I will donate $100,000. Where, where did he get 100 For Peter Hotes, for Peter Hotes, or Hotez, I don't know how to say that, to fight Anthony Fauci to the death in Thunderdome. Oh, there we got, there we got that. Mad Max, great. So Jordan Peterson is retweeting that, and then he says, I'll add $100,000 also if they fight naked. <laughs> Okay, so if you're like me and you read this, you're like, what the hell is this? What is this about? What? What kind of wacky internet crap are you guys on about are you guys on about now? You look at you know, you look at a tweet like this and this is what you see. But apparently the story behind this is that Joe Rogan, Joseph T. Rogan Esquire. The mayor of Austin, Joe Rogan. He's been tweeting some guy, this guy, what's his name again? Peter Hotez, Peter Hotz, uh, who's a vaccine scientist of some kind. Uh, he's been tweeting him to come on his show to debate RFK about the vaccine. So uh, this guy, Peter Hotz, he is a real scientist. He's done a lot of stuff with uh, diseases and vaccines. And Joe Rogan is getting really worked up to get this guy. He's been on Joe Rogan before. But he wants him to come back again, specifically to debate RFK, a guy who's not uh, a scientist. But uh, Joe Rogan is really going off. <laughs> Joe Rogan is really going off on this guy on Twitter. And according to this guy, the scientist guy, he lives in Houston. Um, Anti-vaxxers are coming to his house now. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but that's Joe Rogan's uh, audience. Uh, anti-vaxxers are coming to his house, according to this guy, Peter Hotz, and they're like, go on, go on Joe Rogan. But of course, anything that, uh, Joe Rogan says, Jordy Peterson, uh, jumps right on it, cause... Cause he, he puts me on his show! He puts me on his show! Okay, here's the next thing. This is my favorite Jordyism on Twitter. I'll just read this. So, Elon Musk, so... Iluma! Writes, uh, I am on Team Humanity? I'm on Team Humanity. Who knows what he's talking about? Oh, he's adding TimCast. So Elon Musk writes, I'm on Team Humanity. Jordan Peterson writes, But what about Gaia, sir? And he does this all the time. He does this all the time. <laughs> where he calls... Iluma! Sir. On Twitter. But what about this, sir? Um, sir? Uh, uh, sir, excuse me, sir, but, um... Oh, I know you're probably busy, sir, but, uh... I love you. <laughs> oh, sir! I was thinking about you, and I went like this. Went like that. <laughs> okay, this is another great Jordyism on Twitter, which is that he'll respond to just, like, absolute spam. Like, just, like, no Like, some organization will post post just absolute nothing. Just, like, some innocuous crap. And he'll... And he'll get very weird! 
He'll get very weird about it. Here's him. Here's Jordy Peterson. Diabetes and obesity await. They will strive to control everywhere you go. Everything you say. I can't keep doing that voice. Everything you think. Everything you eat. Oh, my God, Jordy. And he's responding. He does this a lot. He's responding to a post from the United Nations. And it says, eat more plant-based foods. It says, eat more plant-based foods. What else does it say? Throw away less food. Shop local and organic. Start composting. <laughs> this is arousing in me the de desire to write poetry! Angry poetry! Thank you! I mean, you could be pissed off at the United Nations, but let's let's dig a little bit for, for something, something other than eat more plant-based foods. You know what I mean? The beginning of the rise of the Antichrist. You know what you could do with those plant-based foods? Wipe your ass with them. Okay, here's the final Jordy tweet of the day, and I love this one because I had to fly recently, and pretty much this exact thing happened to me that he's describing, but worse. This happens sometimes when you get on a plane, and, like, the plane just sits there for, like, nine hours. You know, like, what do we do? Are we gonna... Is it gonna back up and then take off eventually, or what's up? This was especially bad because there was a kid, like, literally, like, a row over from me, who was crying in this way. You know, some kids have, like, it's like, oh, that's just a kid cry. This kid had what I can only describe as a disgusting cry. <laughs> I know it's a ch it's a child, guys. Come on. And then God bless this parent tries to muffle the cry. You could tell a hand went over this kid's mouth, which made it worse. Made it even creepier, and that's what I was dealing with for about two hours. And I was sitting on this plane, I was just like, well, you know what? This is just part of flying sometimes. <laughs> I mean, this is terrible. This is a nightmare. But this is how it goes sometimes. God damn it to hell. Uh, never did I think of, like, taking to Twitter to complain about it. Here, But here's Jordy. On Air Canada today. <laughs> and, of course, he's adding them. Ah, I hope you see this because I'm going to – I'm pissed off. Today at Toronto Pearson from t Toronto to Edmonton. Who cares? Some Canadian crap. Flight initially delayed half an hour. Then another – oh, half an hour. Then two – another two hours <laughs> while we're on board. Despite being assured that would only be 30 minutes and with no air conditioning. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I was wearing a 14-piece suit. <laughs> I was wearing a suit that was like three other suits on top of it. Then yet another mix-up on takeoff. Plane delayed because pilot did not show up. Constant thank yous for our quote constant quote thank yous for our quote page he's just he's just moaning he's just moaning and belly aching you know most grown adults are like okay flying is bad sometimes you know i hope i get through this yeah he's way not me time to do a little wow wow about it on twitter so there we go teaching the youths to be tough and manly and deal with deal with the punches that life throws your ass but if it's a very common minor inconvenience, wah, wah, wah. And that about wraps up our Jordy coverage for the day. He is doing a little bit of this. And frankly, a little bit of, a little bit of that on that hot plane. This is what that kid sounded like on my plane. So there we go, guys. Big up to Jordy. Big up to Joe and all you guys having a great time on the internet. Love you guys so much. Check out those cats, those rock and roll cats, if they come to your town. Love you so much. And bye-bye. Oh, hey, guys. Guess what? You're not even getting the whole show. If you want every episode and a whole bunch of other sh**, subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. Just click the stupid little link below the video in the comments. See, right there. There you go. Click it and that, yep. <laughs>when you become a patron for as little as two bones you get the tuesday thursday patron only episodes ah! you also get the weekly book oblega show where we talk about important books the questions and comments th th thing where you can ask questions and make comments and all this crap all for less than the price of a rancid charleston chew and for only 25 putrid little dollars you could become a producer that's right support the show and get your name up here look at these people Look at these, these people, it make the show possible, okay? God. I mean, without these beautiful people, this show goes straight into the dumpster. A rotten, you know, just wet, 
disgusting dumpster, you know, behind a restaurant. So it's, there's old milk in there. That's where this show ends up without these people. Is that what you want? Okay, I guess it's, okay. No, I guess it's what you want. I'll just leave. Nope, 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 it's done. It's too late. Okay, okay. Here we go. Here's the dump truck. Here's the dump truck come to pick up the show. This is what would happen with no producers. Thank you.